Hi everyone, it's John, and you know that 2018 is the year that I said, man, I went full-time with active self-protection, and I told my wife, as long as we can pay our bills, I'm gonna train this year like it's my dang job. And she said that was cool, and this past weekend, I took a class with Dr. William April, and with Cecil Birch, and Larry Lindemann of the Shipworks Cartel, on uh, which they call their unthinkable class, and that included uh, a section on saps and jacks, so using those and using small knives as well as uh, the violent criminal actors part. I want to tell you about it. I think it was a fantastic class. Had a great time. Let me show you. I got some video for you today of what we did, what I learned, and why I think this is a class that, man, I really recommend you attend. Today's video is brought to us in part by the generosity of LuckyGunner.com. For the best selection of name brand defensive ammunition and lightning fast shipping on bulk target ammo, head to LuckyGunner.com and thank them for being a sponsor of Active Self Protection. So this class is a three day class, basically two and a half days, right? So it's a Friday night, all day Saturday, all day Sunday, and here's the flow of the class. Uh, on Friday evening, um, William April gave his violent criminal actors talk. And yet, we've got to figure out a way to bridge the gap between fun and real. And why they're not like us, and why maybe, uh, you know, they're not who we expect they are. And then Saturday morning, we had some more of that, talking about uh, the realities of deadly force and what it means in America and who can victimize you and what they're really like. Uh, then the rest of, of uh, Saturday afternoon was an introduction to the uh, Shipworks really starts you know, with Craig Douglas. Craig's the one who really started some of this terminology of managing unknown contacts or muck. And, um, and then really expanding that, we got a little introduction to using the sap uh, and the jack from Larry Lindemann and a little bit of introduction to using the small knife from Cecil Birch. Then all day on Sunday, from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., we worked some more on saps and jacks and then on small knives with a little bit more lecture. And, and William did a little bit of lecture on um, how to survive kidnapping. And that was a really interesting, helpful time as well. Then we pressure tested at the end. We learned some significant techniques. And uh, man, pressure tested them at the end with some, some stuff with a little bit of, of kind of amped up. Uh, attitude and whether we could actually put it to work and that's where the class ended. So a couple things as we kind of look at how this goes. Uh, I, I think honestly, man, you know, I've said to people that yes, getting your CCW is important. Getting your empty handed skills is important. Uh, you know, carrying a firearm is important. But after you've done those couple of classes, then I really think that there are a few classes that you've got to take uh, that, that I recommend all firearms carriers take. I, I did a, an after action on the MAG-40 on the Saudi Ubes class, and I think MAG-40 is a required element. I really do. The next one I would say that, that even if you're not into saps and jacks and, and into small knives, which I think is a little bit advanced stuff, I think that Dr. April's material on who the real violent criminal actors are, not just people that are looking for some money, but people who are willing to kill you for it, and, and who those folks are and how we can identify them and, and what to look for, I think is absolutely required stuff. Now really, I, I think for me, having done a ton of research in this area, having you know lived it out, watched uh, so many videos of it, done a ton of research myself, a lot of what he said confirmed what, what I said, but it said it from his perspective and his expertise. And you gotta understand that, that uh, William not only was a, a fairly long time police officer, but now he works in behavioral health as a mental health professional. And so he gets to see uh, people at their worst and, 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 and be in places among violent actors and understand them and so his clinical expertise gives him an incredible understanding of violent criminal actors and of mood disorders and personality disorders and how does mental illness fit into this and and what are the choices what are the different theories and philosophies of how people become uh, violentized as they say or, or made to uh, you know be able to do violence and what that means for you and me and how we can protect ourselves from those. That portion of class, which is uh, really about six to eight hours of material, is just incredibly useful. And, and so I, I'm just going to tell you, if ever you get the opportunity, whether or not it's part of another class, to take that class from Dr. April, take it, pay the money, 
Give the man his money. Seriously, if I could say, listen, every concealed carrier in America needs to take this class and give William the, the money that his expertise is due for that material, I would do it. I think that was incredibly, incredibly valuable. Next, on Saturday afternoon, we practice something that I think most people don't really think about. And, and that's managing unknown contacts. And both Cecil Birch, Cecil's a friend of mine, okay? And um, he's, you know, become a buddy who has helped me through some personal difficult stuff. He's also an incredible jujitsuka with, I mean, uh, more medals than you can shake a stick at. You know, guy's got a second degree black belt in jujitsu under Megaton Diaz. And he's just an incredible, incredible uh, self-defender, range master certified pistol instructor and all that. I've trained with Cecil a whole bunch. Uh, this is the first time I ever trained with Larry Lindemann. And uh, Larry just got his first degree under, oh gosh, I forget, one of the Gracies. Um, and so it's a legit uh, jiu-jitsu black belt. Those take a long time to earn. Heck of a guy, longtime police officer in rough neighborhoods doing undercover work and, and supervising undercover officers and, and also very accomplished. So when we talk about doing managing unknown contacts, that is keeping people at distance and, and not letting them get to the place where they can come and victimize you. And, and what this does is it makes you think about your body mechanics, the way that you move yourself, as well as using your verbal skills and when to go from being kind to being forceful. You know, that, that ask, tell, make paradigm. And uh, really valuable because what it did is it put me under a cognitive load. You gotta think about, okay, wait a minute, am I extending my hands out too far? Am I, am I moving off the line? Am I communicating in an appropriate manner? When it's time to go and access my tools, am I ready to do that? And most people don't practice that at all. And we got to practice it a whole bunch and we got to fail at it a lot and we got to have different people pressure us in that way, in a friendly, good way. And, um, and and man, that was super helpful. Just the muck context was really, really, really helpful. Now, Larry really focused on the sap and the jack, and, and I don't have one here with me, but you know, a sap is basically a, a, a you know, a stout piece of leather that you hold in your hand might stick out about this far with a weighted end and a sap is flat. So it's like thin and then flat like this, you know, maybe like uh, you could make one out of a coin purse or something. Uh, whereas a jack is more rounded, like a, like a ball on the end of it, maybe a, you know, a metal monkey fist wrapped in leather or something around a handle. Uh, and, and we talked about those in different states have different legalities as to whether those are legal but where those could be useful and how they might be useful to add force if you really had to go and protect yourself. That was incredibly valuable. I'd never worked with them before. Now, is that like beginning level stuff? No, it's not. But it, it is significant to say, okay, wait a minute, here's another option in an area that you might not be able to carry something else where it, this might be legal. You also might be able to improvise one if you needed to, stuff like that. So it was an interesting and useful thing for a guy like me who has, you know, 12 and a half years of martial arts training. I've seen a lot, but that's something I hadn't seen. Now, Cecil mostly focused on the knives. We did talk about folding knives or, you know, this one is the one that I normally carry. It's a, a Ravencrest Tactical, it's a, out the front. Uh, not a folder, but you know, they call these a broken knife, right? You know, you gotta get it out of where you have it, get it into the fight, and then use it effectively, whether long held or short held. And we worked on all of that from the perspective of somebody encroaching on you who was a deadly threat. And we worked on those with different kinds of knives. So there were straight blade knives. We worked on some trainers that were folders. We worked on, uh, you know, things like a clinch pick and those kind of knives. And so working in close proximity, all standing on our feet, was really helpful and really good. And, and getting to understand, okay, wait a minute, when this knife comes out, what am I gonna have to do? We worked on a couple of techniques that frankly were new to me. And, and again, as somebody who's trained with my hands a lot, that was kind of fun to have a guy who really pressure tests and work on things like Cecil Birch give me some stuff to say, John, work on this. And, and you know, to work with a bunch of different students from students who were brand new and had really no formal training experience at all to students who clearly were incredibly experienced and incredibly helpful and incredibly talented with short blades and with saps and jacks was a ton of fun and very useful and productive time. <laughs> Thank you.
One of the things I'll say about both of them is that we didn't waste any time. There wasn't time kind of just like, let's do 25 more reps of this. It was no, get some reps, get somebody else there, and let's work on this little nuance. Let's work on this little thing. Then we finished the day with uh, on Sunday with pressure testing, and um, I got to be the bad guy in one of them, which was a ton of fun. You know, when you get to be the pressure test, that was awesome. And, and getting to pressure test is just fun. And again, to have somebody pressure testing, you got to have somebody who is a resisting opponent, not somebody who's letting you win, but somebody who's a resisting opponent with opposing will. They, they have their own ability to do things. With malevolent intent, they want you to lose, man. They don't just want to not let you succeed, but they want you to actually lose. And then they have freedom of choice, freedom of motion. They can do anything they want. If you have all four of those, then you get some actual pressure testing. And we had some actual pressure, pressure testing, which was really awesome. Go. Now, the thing that I will say, I already told you about William. He's a quote machine. His class is amazing. I will say this. Cecil Birch, uh, as a friend of mine, is an incredible teacher. He has the ability to take complicated concepts, make them simple, and transfer that knowledge to you. Makes it incredibly valuable. I can't say enough about training with Cecil. I've taken two classes from him now. I took uh, his close contact handgun class, and I have taken uh, this class, Unthinkable. Then uh, I've trained alongside him as well at TACCON and uh, at uh, the Range Master uh, Instructor Certification, Handgun Instructor class. So, man, this guy is the real deal. Run at me as fast as you can, and like you're gonna chest, you know, chest bump me in for a second. Ready? Go. What did you do? Larry Lindenman, also incredible guy. Here's something that I really respected. I'm not a jiu you know, I have some significant empty-handed training, jiu-jitsu's not my bag. And Larry, incredible respected guy, right, with so much uh, experience in the real world and a legit jiu-jitsu black belt, I was asking questions because there was a few things that philosophically were different, that weren't quite the same. And, and two things stood out to me. Number one, Larry treated my inquiries with respect. He wanted to hear from me and then he had an answer, but that answer came in context. And he was willing to dialogue with me, which not a lot of martial artists are. I got to be real. A lot of guys would be like, nah, you're stupid. Get out of here. You know, my way is the right way. Kick rocks. Not Larry. He said, man, John, that's an interesting thought. Huh, let me think about that. I think from this perspective. And I really respect that. I really respect that. And, and number two, that he was willing to dive into nuances and problems. And he had a depth of knowledge of all of these things that was more than just do it my way because I said so. And when I would ask questions about mechanics or about, hey, what about this? And how am I going to keep this in line? And what about those things? He would think through those things with me and engage and kind of play off me and foil that a little bit. And that's really helpful and really valuable. So he's going to be eye jab, he's going to be sad. I might not use deadly force, I'm going to be back in the service as well. Probably not going to use deadly force. So, you know, a, a training like this is going to cost you a few hundred bucks, right? You got to think 20 hours of training um, in this kind of a, an incredibly valuable, you know, uh, idea rich way isn't going to come cheap, right? So this class is about 400 bucks, give or take, depending on what you're doing. Plus, if you're coming from out of town, you got to think about adding a uh, hotel and food and all that stuff. But was it worth it? Man, I, I happen to take it here in Phoenix where uh, this one is. And uh, so I got to sleep in my own bed. I got to eat my own food. And uh, Mia Culpa, because I helped kind of get a, uh, a place for us to have the classroom portion, did a little bit of advertising um, about being a part of the class and inviting ASP, uh, ASP folks to be a part of the class, uh, they caught me a seat in the class. Would I pay for that class? Uh, unequivocally, I would. In fact, when it comes back around to Phoenix next year, I'm going to come to the class again to get more and get some more experience. So here's me heartfelt saying, if you get an opportunity to take a class with any of these three gentlemen, I would recommend it. I think that, uh, you know, this particular class wouldn't be like, uh, we had students in there who were, it was their very first formal training class and they got a lot out of it. Now me personally, I would say get a couple of other things done first, those kind of 2080 rule classes. Um, but just for, for the unthinkable portion, the violent criminal actors lecture and the managing unknown contacts portion, it's worth it right there. You, you aren't going to get that material without going to them. 
and it's worth it, guys. This is why I'm training so much. So this was, um, uh, when I finished this class in 2018, this is made for 146 hours of training so far this year in gun school. I call it still gun school, even though we didn't use guns. Uh, and that's apart from my normal martial arts training. So we're 150, 146 hours in, hoping to get 250 hours this year of firearms training as a student. So hope you get a class in this year. Let me know in the comments about the last class that you took. I want to hear about it and hear what you're learning as well as me telling you what I'm learning so that we can help each other to become better in our self-defense. Thanks, everybody. Hope you have a great day.